Good morning loyal viewers, this is Lorenzo and welcome to episode 18 of KSP Contracting. Today we're catching asteroids. We have received some vessels that can grab the rocks, pull them back to the planet and then attach them to something. And what we shall be doing, what we shall be endeavoring to do is to get an asteroid, rendezvous it with this asteroid and link the two together in orbit to start a magnificent city in the sky or something like that. We have a few asteroids on the radar already. We also have the Greiswolf uh, combined Juna mission on the radar. I just had a look and it's 184 days before we have to do a course correction. So that's a little bit into the future yet. So we don't need to worry about that. Let's track another asteroid. This one. This is not an asteroid. This one. Is this an asteroid? It is an asteroid. Let's track it. And... Oh look at that, it's coming to it's going to be rather close to Kerbin in 38 days. That's good news. Let's see if there is maybe another asteroid that does that. This one here doesn't. This one here does 46 days. This one is already of course in orbit. This one here doesn't. This one does 30 days. This one does 146 days and this one does 38 days. So we're going to go for the 30 day class A asteroid. It's the smallest one and that's good because we will be needing to well nudge it quite specifically and uh, well it's always good to have um, more delta V than less for those kind of maneuvers. Let's see if we can look at the attitude that this asteroid will be happening by our planet yeah, I can't really make heads or tails of that. Let's just fast forward time and then we shall warp, uh, well, then we shall launch a ship to grab it. I'm not sticking to the 30 day launch windows anymore. Well, I am sticking to them, but I'm not launching something every 30 days. Um, just because we need to be a little bit quicker on the time to allow the Duna mission to get there. And, well, this way we can do fun stuff. Okay, so the asteroid is in the sphere of influence and it is going to pass us by here. Oh, it's going to pass by the moon. Oh, maybe I can intercept it there. Anyway, let's uh, launch something and see if we can make it happen. I hope we can because I've been going on all about it. We got the KPR Graboid number two submitted by, I think it was James. Thank you, James. The same guy that did the KPR Graboid one, obviously. Jeremy Kerman is going to be our astronaut. He has not flown before. Oh, look at that. Here we have a little bit of action groups. One, toggle front RCS. Two, toggle rear RCS. Zero, deploy parachute and jetson LES. Used only in case of abort. Abort button. Engage the launch escape system. Right. Right. We have a launch escape system. That's good. Hopefully we won't be needing it, obviously, but yeah, still, it's good. Let us go to the launch scene here. And of course it is a nice launch because it's always, it always, always is. And this, ooh, we have two asteroids to potentially grab. We could do this one. And that is already in an orbit that's somewhat reminiscent. No, well, no, the orbits are random. Or we could do this one. That is going to encounter the moon. Before this is six days until periapsis, and this has eight days until periapsis. Ooh, I'm wondering which one I should get. I'm going to try for this one because if I'm lucky I can grab it uh, while it's passing through the moon sphere of influence and then uh, we can get more science from that as well so now we should be able to get it um, look at that, here we are that is actually not a horrible place to launch from, I'm going to time warp a little bit so that we can we can launch in that inclination which should be marked on the on the nav ball, I think. Yeah, if we just point towards that, 
Mm. Wait, we want to rotate that way, so we go north in the direction. Uh, yeah, we just go sort of north, and we'll see how that goes. All right, launching. Here we have Jeremy German, and we are going up at a decent clip. Once we are in space and en route to the asteroid, I of course have some interesting news for you again, but for now let's just wait until we cycle through all the stages. There goes the first one. Cleanly separated by some separatrons. And after a little while we can get rid of the second one. There they go. Bye bye bye. Now we are on the remainder of our first stage. That will take us most of the way to space. Let's see. Oh! Oh, that was the launch escape system. Well, we don't need that anymore, and we also don't need these stages anymore. Look, I'm doing it pretty well. We're at 7 degrees. Ah, oh, it used to be 4 degrees, so I need to steer a little bit more. If I can line that up with the, the um, asteroid's plane immediately, I will be very happy. So that means that we can get straight on to rendezvousing, which is good. Let's see, this is now decreasing, so I'm moving a little bit more this way. And the ships should have plenty of delta V. Let me just fiddle with this orbit and show you the end result, which is a nice orbit by 80 kilometers by 136 with a relative inclination of 4 degrees relative to the asteroid's trajectory. Now I'm going to fix it from low orbit and in a previous video Nathan, uh, one of my loyal loyal viewers, has rightly sh uh, said that it's much, efficient, much, much more efficient to do the plane changes at a higher altitude. I'm not going to do that because we're sort of on a clock. This asteroid is going to whiz by and we don't want to spend any time um, well, any time fine-tuning our orbit whilst we could have been chasing after it. Also, the relative inclination is low enough, it's 4 degrees, that it is manageable um, well, without resorting to efficiency boosting tricks. It's 154 meters per second to fix that 4 degree declination, inclination, I don't know what the difference between those words are, I think it's a positive negative thing and I don't mind that. Right, so I'm going to line up the ship for this inclination correction burn and then we shall see about catching the asteroid. This is what that looks like. And that's the inclination fixing burn. Down to 2 meters per second, that should be accurate enough. 0, 0.0, that, well that definitely should be accurate enough. Right, let's put our trajectory on to the periapsis of the asteroid. Let's see. I want to have that as close as possible. So that should be good. And this will take us to get here. Can we do that? One day. So our period is two days and this asteroid will get here in six days. That means we get all the time in the world to make a nice encounter. So we're going to do this burn. What I'm looking for, I, what I don't want is that I get there in five days, uh, the asteroid gets there in six, and that means I can't do another circle to um, to match up with it. Because my trick is when I get to periapsis to modulate the duration of the next orbit by increasing it so that it coincides with uh, the arrival of the asteroid. Now looking at the orbit we have here, this is very high, this is very low. We have all the all the, all the space in the universe to make it a larger orbit um, but not a lot to make it a smaller orbit. So if I were to come here before the asteroid but within one more period, um, that would make it hard for me to rendezvous with it. Fortunately our orbital period will be about two days and the asteroid will still be six days away. So that will make the rendezvous method work. Just explaining my um, random thoughts there, which turn out to be not quite so random. Anyway, this ship is taking a lot of 
thrust, taking a lot of RCS to maneuver. It goes very slowly, that's because we still have this drive stage attached, which has a little bit of fuel, um, but still we are going to use that. So let's time warp forward to the 19 minute mark, where we can do our 800 meters per second asteroid rendezvous interception burn. And while we do that, let me share with you the interesting news of today. It is space related today, rather than biology related last episode. Today the news is about SpaceX, which is one of my favorite companies. And as you might be aware, and if not, don't worry, I will explain. They are uh, working on developing a reusable launch system. They currently operate the Falcon 9 launcher, which is a decent, well, it's actually a, a really nice launcher. It launches the Dragon capsule, um, which goes to the International Space Sa Station, and it launches uh, commercial payloads. Basically, if you want to rent a rocket, you can do so. For all intents and purposes, it is a traditional rocket. It has two or three stages. I think it has two stages. And the first stage is just dropped into the ocean and discarded forever. It's a expendable launch platform. Now, what they are working on is making this reusable, and they've been doing this for several years. You might have seen the Grasshopper uh, videos on YouTube, and if you haven't, uh, go check them out, they're really nice. Um, basically, what they're trying to do is to, after a launch, keep some fuel in the first stage, and that can then be used to guide it to a landing zone, uh, where it will soft land on legs, um, ready to be refueled. And that is huge, because that's never been done before. Uh, landing a rocket vertically is really hard. It's uh, apparently quite unstable to traverse the atmosphere at hypersonic speeds riding a rocket plume downwards. Um, they are doing that and the benefit should be obvious. They will have a refuelable intact first stage sitting on a launch pad somewhere instead of uh, either just not having it at all or having it crash down into the ocean at several dozen miles an hour on parachutes uh, which basically leads to recovery of the material only. You have to refurbish everything. That's what they did with the, the space shuttle boosters. Also, you need a navy to get it, so they don't have that. So they want to launch. Uh, the, they want to soft land the uh, the first stage. The news today, actually from about 10 days ago, April 25th, which incidentally was my birthday, so it was a nice news present, is that they have been making nice strides in um, developing this soft landing rocket stage. What they did, they moved from the Grasshopper test platform, they moved to the, the F9R, the Falcon 9 reusable, and there's a, a video on YouTube, it's quite impressive, I will link it in the description as well, and there they launch a first stage up to a kilometer of altitude, and then just land it again, and it looks so steady. Now that's all nice and good, that's basically the stuff that has been popping up for the past, I don't know, two years. Um, they have been making progress on this. But the real interesting and nice news bit is that they did it for real in, I think, the Ap April the 18th it was. They had a commercial launch. And while they did the commercial launch just as advertised as expected, they also um, used it as a test bed to soft land their first stage. It had landing legs, it had kept some fuel in the tanks, and it soft landed. It still did so in the ocean because, well, they couldn't leave enough fuel to fly it somewhere useful. Also, a first test of a landing rocket, maybe you want to do that in the ocean. You don't want to do that anywhere near where people live. Anyway, the telemetry said it went really well. The stage landed very, very gently and then fell into the ocean because, well, the ocean is the ocean. It's not firm, solid ground. Unfortunately, then a storm came in and destroyed the stage. Now, if this were any other company than SpaceX, I would be cynical and said, yeah, sure, everything went swimmingly, and then a storm came in and shredded the evidence. But um, seeing their YouTube videos and everything, I uh, completely believe that they made that system work. Check out the um, description of this video. There's two links in there. there. One will be the YouTube video of that one kilometer test that was videoed from close up by a, a camera drone I think and a link to the the story about that um, about that actual real world test and to just touch briefly on the significance of a reusable launch system uh, the cost of f the fuel 
in a rocket launch is generally between 5 and 10 percent of the cost. It is monumentally expensive to get eight rocket engines, all the fuselages, the turbo pumps, everything, and just throw it away after one launch. It's one of the big things that makes space launches so expensive. So if you can get the first stage back, that is huge. Um, that would be able to cut the cost by an order of magnitude. Maybe not initially, but once that technology is rolled out, it will reduce the cost of launches tremendously. So far that, um, let's say, a group of friends, three to five, not rich, but affluent people, could just take an extra mortgage on their house and launch a rocket. And that's awesome. That's, that's, that's great. That's the future I want to live in. Anyway. Back to the present, where we are intercepting asteroids. And f to do that properly, we will need to fast forward time just ever so slightly. Wait, we don't actually need to do that just yet. We can make a maneuver node and see if we can do, if we can make an intercept. No, we can't make an intercept just yet. We have to wait. Oh, do we? Do we? Do we? Do we? Look at that. No, we can make the intercept. No sweat, no problem. Yeah, we can do this. That is still 250 kilometers. 35. Anyway, this is going to be really easy because uh, the plane is just bang on, so we can fine tune that as we burn. I'm going to fast forward until we actually are doing that burn because everything should be fairly straightforward until that point. So see you there in a... well, the note happens in 5 hours and 20 minutes, so see you then. And there we are, performing the burn, 80 meters, meters per second remaining, so that means we are going to switch to this view, delete the maneuver node, and just pay attention to this intersect marker. Let's see. decrease the thrust just a little bit because that is going rapidly 50 kilometers 30 17 and let's grab the RCS instead well 17 kilometers that's good enough for a first go so this will happen in four days and that's an easy time warp I think so let's do that. This is great. We will meet the asteroid just before we enter the moon's sphere of influence. And that means we can get high, kerbal si high, high kerbin science, high and low moon science, and then low kerbin science from the asteroid. So apart from doing our construction bit, we will be able to get science, which is of course awesome. We are all in it for the science. My encounter markers have completely screwed up though, probably because of the lunar intercept in, in the near future. Can we see the asteroid yet? That's the important bit. Okay, let's do more time warping. It's always hard to gauge distances because you can't tell how far you zoomed in. Is this an astronomical unit or a kilometer? Um, somewhere in between probably so this is coming right close now so now we should be able to see it 18 kilometers fire the engines let's reduce that relative speed to zero well this bit you've seen before as well so I'm going to skip over it also see you when we are right close to the asteroid and there we have it asteroid IKB 391 a a class small asteroid that will shortly be attached to our graboid let's arm that just to be sure and then we will proceed to grab that to drag that past the moon see how it reacts that's why Jenemy Kerman is along and then we shall maneuver it into a high Kerbin orbit match planes with the asteroid already stored there and then smash them together or connect them together or build something or do do something amazing and inspiring to our youth because 
that's what's important these days. To cripple youth. Damn it. I'm trying to be a politician, but I'm not really good at that, I don't think. Um, also, don't really want to smash into the asteroid. Please rotate spaceship. It seems to be going well. It seems to be going well. This is a really tiny asteroid. This is the first A-class asteroid that I've ever had the pleasure of encountering. And it is positively tiny. I think it's smaller than the spaceship. Which is good. Because then we can maybe not use it as a as a base, but as a decoration for a base. Yes, that sounds like a plan. Okay. Serious. Time to get serious. Orienting the ship. Target the center of mass. Aye, aye, Captain. Center of mass targeted. Fire torpedoes. No, no, no. That's not what we're doing. We are grabbing it, not destroying it. Okay. RCS forwards. Engaged. Sort of. Right. Bunch it more. We need meters per second. Oh no, we don't need meters per second. We can just time accelerate. Anyway, we're just a few dozens of meters away now. Coming in to grab this cute asteroid, which shouldn't be a problem at all. Look at that. It, looks the, it has the same apparent size as the moon. That's a nice coincidence. That will soon change when we actually get to the moon. But for now, it is neato. After this episode, my download of Dark Souls should be almost finished, Dark Souls 2, and I'm considering doing a let's play through of that, because I have i don't really know anything about it, it's just, it's, it seems to be this game that the whole internet is up in arms about, that it's so cool and so difficult and so awesome, so I thought let's give that a go. Sounds fair. So you might, you might see that, you might see that pop up on the channel after this or it might not if I hate it immediately I might just throw it away and never touch it again but you know oh look at that that's a phone call that's nice just five seconds before I grab this asteroid well I'll be right back there we go back again that was just a second fortunately we can pause time in this game otherwise Jenemy would have had to do it himself and I'm not sure that would have gone so well so Let's see about grabbing this asteroid. Well, there's really nothing to it. Just wait. One, two, three. Clamp engaged. I think. Yeah, it looks like we're stuck. So that's good. And I think it's also properly centered on the center of mass, that's, which is, of course, really easy with a rock this small. Okay, so first things first. Genemy go outside and grab us some science from this rock. The example. Right on. High over curbing. Keep that data. Get back into the capsule. Because now we are going to alter our trajectory to get really close to the moon. Because we want that. Lunar periapsis is Is this even doing anything? Yes, this is more like it. Oh, we don't actually want to crash on the moon. Three kilometers, that seems ambitious. I have a feeling I could use the moon to alter to alter my inclination quite dramatically for a very low cost, but I'm not good enough at rocket science to do that. What we will do now is get captured for a relatively low cost, I think. And we get a flyby of the moon, which is also worth something, so let us r try and rotate the asteroid. Oh, this asteroid is really light. Look how well the RCS deals with that. That's nice. Awesome. So let's do this 158 meter per second burn. 
And then I'm going to do the two sciences from the moon, and I think I'll conclude the episode with that. Then we can stick to one launch per episode, and I can, for the next episode, I can put this thing into the orbit with, um, with the other asteroid, and then launch the connector bit, which should be fun, should be fun. But for now, let's swing it by the moon and see how that goes. So, core's locked in. Let's fire the engines, and I think this should go pretty well. And, yeah, that is going pretty well. The connection is pretty much perfect from the get-go. We can steer the asteroid no problem, and it's really light, so we can, we're, we're booking it. This is, a f this is my favorite toy asteroid really small we can take it anywhere it doesn't even impact our delta v well it does but marginally so and it is very nicely controllable much easier than the big ones wonderful so let's get rid of this maneuver node and just keep burning until this periapsis is suitably low 20 kilometers seems very reasonable indeed and let's now time warp to that lunar sphere of influence after that we'll be in a nice high curb in orbit where we can modify our plane to coincide with that other asteroid. Everything seems to be going well. Wonderful. Okay, time for more science. Take a sample. Space high over the moon. Nice. 60 more science. It's not a massive science mission, but well, every little point helps. And we might be able to get a note after this. Well, not after this, because after this, the craft will still be around... Um, blah, 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 the, the guy will still be in the cockpit, in the craft, in space, so the signs will not have been returned. So, let's behold the nice lunar surface from close by. Very familiar to us veteran KSP players. You can even land on this, new guys. Wonderful. More science from the asteroids. Guys, viewers, do you know... If there is any science um, science gear that you can actually use on the asteroids apart from taking samples from it, I don't think there are. I mean, if you if if this ship now had a materials bay on it, it wouldn't do anything different because there was an asteroid attached. I don't think, but I'm not completely sure. So if you know, feel free to tell me, and I will be happy with that info. Right. So we have all the science. We have all the science. Let us time warp out of the sphere of influence of the moon and see what kind of a burn we will need to match planes with our fellow asteroid. So here we are, Kirby orbit established. Let's target this one. Its orbit is about as offset as it gets. Let's go over here. 90 degrees. That's that's nice. That is definitely nice. And this is going the wrong way. We need to go this way. If the ascending or descending nodes read 180 degrees, that means you're in the same plane but orbiting the, the other direction, which obviously is not that great. Anyway, we're looking at a delta V of about a kilometer per second to change that 90 degree inclination change to a 1.1 degree inclination change difference. Inclination difference. So that's first things first that's that's not first things first that's the first thing we're going to do and I do wonder if we have enough fuel for it I'm going to assume we have and otherwise we're just going to have to mount a rescue mission for dear Jenemy this and more awesome things with nice interesting news will sh be shown in the next episode for now thank you so much for watching again and well check back Friday to see what happened I'm Lorenzo, thanks for watching once again, and see you next time. Bye bye.